So, we just saw how Swaras uh, make a raga and as I have said it is only a basic feature of the raga. If you can speak of the tip of the iceberg, this Swaras really are the tip of the iceberg. There is a whole lot of uh, complexity and nuances that lie under the water. What gives a raga form? Swara, as I said, is a skeleton, and what fleshes it out? It is how the swaras are used, ornamentation, what is called gamaka. Now, the swaras are not are not sung like this. Ga gadisa, ga pagani da pagadisa. This is not how we sing it. This is a staccato rendition of Swaras. Already I have said This is not how we sing it. So there are so many things we do to the Swaras. We we shake them, we pull them, we push them. We glide from one swara to another. We uh, there are rapid flashes. There are flicks. There are many kinds of ways that we approach swaras. And this is what a very generic term for all this uh, is gamaka. Both Carnatic and Hindustani music, gamaka is a very very fundamental feature of Indian music in the sense that we approach swaras not as discrete units. This is not how we treat swaras. So, this kind of a continuum is maintained in the way we treat swaras. Now, these shakes, ornaments that we, that we speak of, they are not arbitrary, they are very precise. They are very precise ways of uh, ornamenting the swaras, if I may say, if I may use that expression. And because of this, there are subtle microtonal inflections. And what is a microtone? We will see a little later. So, this then is a, a brief glimpse into the concept of gamaka. The other aspect of a raga, apart from swara and gamaka, is also phraseology, phrases. Now, given that a raga has this set of swaras, it has say ga and not ma, and you know the aroha, you know how it goes, you know the swaras that comprise it. Not any combination of these swaras will bring out the raga. There are very uh, clear phrases, there are phrases that can immediately evoke the raga's image. And oral tradition hands these phrases down through compositions and through expositions by masters. Given that only some swaras are permitted in a certain raga and others are not, even those swaras which are permitted in the raga, which comprise the raga, they may not be combined in any way. It is not a question of mathematical combinations, figuring out some uh, combination and trying to create melodies. That is not how it works. There are phrases using those swaras, which will clearly bring out the form of the raga, more clearly than certain other phrases. So, while what is called raga vachaka, that which immediately speaks the raga. There are these phrases which will immediately tell you what raga it is. There are other phrases which 
oral tradition will subtly disallow. You see, in all this, we speak of swaras, we speak of ornamentation, we speak of phraseology, but ultimately, raga transcends all attempts at description. Any raga, it is not something that you can list out as this is how it has to be done. It is beyond the discursive realm. It is something that has to be absorbed. Learning a raga is definitely not by way of the guru never tells the student that this, uh, this is the way you have to ornament it, these are the ornaments, these are the phrases, this is not how it is done. The way of transmitting raga, the way of grasping a raga is entirely through exposing yourself to ragas, to the raga in various contexts. It is much like a language. How do you learn a language? How do you learn to speak a language? You expose yourself to it. That is how a child is able to speak its mother tongue. If you sit with a set of grammar books of a foreign language, you are not going to be able to master it. Go live in that, uh, in the place where there are native speakers of their tongue and you will pick up the language. That is how a raga is also absorbed, that is also how a raga is taught. In order to learn a raga, there is no other way than to learn compositions in it, compositions from a good teacher. You learn it, you hear it again and again and that is how you grasp the raga. So it is this that we should now look at, these two aspects of raga, gamaka and or ornamentation and phraseology. But before we go into this, because when you speak of gamaka, it is gamaka of a swara, it is the swara that has a gamaka and in the context of a raga. The same swara will have a different gamaka in a different raga. So, let us spend some time trying to see how swara has been treated, the concept of swara, how it has been treated in the tradition. 